Thank you, John. I'm glad we didn't skip that. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't skip that. <laughs> so this morning we're talking about the physics of courage. And it's easy when we think of courage to think of our military servicemen that we just honored on Veterans Day and how much courage that takes. I was talking to somebody a couple days ago um, who's a Marine, and, and I asked him, what does courage mean to you? And it was very interesting to me that he said, well, I have several friends who earned medals of honor trying to save others' lives. That's courage. And I asked him, well, but have you ever thought of courage in your own life? And that made him stop and pause. Because I think, yes, we honor those who, who so obviously sacrificed their lives to save others and, and were awarded medals for that. But what about every serviceman who strapped on some sort of pack every day and headed out into the unknown and may not have earned any medals? Does that make them less courageous? I don't think so. I don't think so. And not to minimize the surface, but what about every one of us as individuals who gets up every day, straps on our pack of life and responsibilities, and heads out into the unknown? Does that make us less courageous? I don't think so. Mark Nepo has a really, I, I love his book of awakening, and he has um, this great way of talking about courage in his um, writing called The Art of Facing Things. And he talks about the salmon, which we all are so familiar with here in the Pacific Northwest. Let me put these on first. I'm trying to find ways to adjust to this eye that's not functioning correctly here. Ah, better. What the salmon somehow know is how to turn their underside from center to tail into the powerful current coming at them which hits them squarely and the impact then launches them out and further up the waterfall. And they do that continuously. Their leaning into what they face bounces them further and further along their unlikely journey. In terms useful to the life of the spirit, the salmon are constantly faithful in exposing their underside to the current coming at them. Mysteriously, it is the physics of this courage that enables them to move through life as they know it so directly. Isn't that beautiful? I had never thought of what salmon do in that way. Exposing their underside. So he talks about the physics of courage. That phrase really caught me. So what does that mean? Well, physics, we know, is how something works. And when I looked up courage, I found all of these different quotes. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. That was John Wayne. And Lucille Ball said, and I thought this was very interesting, I'm not funny. What I am is brave. Isn't that powerful? And then the beautiful Maya Angelou says, having courage does not mean that we are unafraid. Having courage and showing courage mean we face our fears. We are able to say, I have fallen, but I will get back up. Great definitions of courage. So how do the physics of courage work? Well, my son Tristan, who's a sophomore and taking physics, which most sophomores don't take physics, that's an upper class um, level class, but he's loving it. And so I'm talking about the physics of courage. So I said, tell me, Tristan, what are physics? You should never ask that question to someone who really loves physics and I know nothing. <laughs> and then I had to say, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Break it down into something I'm going to understand. And I said, he said, what are you talking about? Talking about courage. He said, okay, here's what it is, Mom. He said, courage equals the action minus the fear. So the greater the fear, the bigger the action you have to take to be courageous. I thought that was, I was like, wow, Tristan, I'm going to write that down. He said, give me credit. <laughs> But that's powerful, right? I mean, I don't know physics equations or any of that stuff, but I could get that. I could understand that. 
And so, as I think about that, the, the action has to be greater than the fear. What gets in our way? What gets in our way of taking those actions? And, and I think my thought was it's how we've responded to life up to this point. So, so many times we take missteps, things happen to us, and what we do is we allow ourselves to harden. We harden against the world, we develop these walls, and we already learned courage, like the salmon, is about exposing your vulnerability. Well, when you harden, that can't happen. And so I think what we need to do is we need to somehow find a way to allow all of those things in life instead to harden us, to soften us, so that we're pliable so that we can roll with it, so that when something hits us, we don't crack and break. We can quickly change our course, we can go with the flow, we can keep moving. So, so courage can be those big things, like in our servicemen, but every day, how do we, how do I, how do you exhibit courage? So I'm going to tell you some stories about me, and I want you to think about, because I know that you're all courageous. You're all here, you're all full of courage. So I was thinking, and I think courage is a muscle that we build. And the more we exhibit it, the more we're able to exhibit it. And so I was thinking back as a child, was I very courageous? Well, I didn't feel like it. I remember I was scared to death of snakes. And I was probably about the age of my youngest daughter right now, who just turned 11. And I remember I would wake up needing to use the bathroom, and I could just see the ceiling was crawling with snakes. And I just knew there were snakes all around the floor, and I was terrified. And a few times I was able to overcome that and make it to the bathroom and back. But most of the time I just laid there and prayed I didn't wet the bed. Right? <laughs> I hadn't built that courage muscle yet. Right? And then as we go, I mean, I had some things happen to me when I went through my divorce, which I'm not going to go into details. But the, the biggest one that I thought that happened was I just went through treatments. Seven weeks of chemo and radiation therapy. And... I remember the first time I went into radiation and they had built the mask for my head and they locked that mask down. And you, I was panicked. I suddenly felt utterly and completely trapped. And it took courage to be able to say, you can do this. Calm down. Take a breath. Let the fear go. Everything is okay. And I remember my doctor telling me, at, I met with him every week, both doctors, radiation and chemo, and my radiation doctor said, you're doing so well. Most people in this kind of treatment quit before they get halfway through. And it was because I was building the courage muscle and every week when I had to walk in there, every day, five days a week when I had to walk in there, I had the opportunity to take a breath, find that courage, and keep on going. And then yesterday, my kids and I took a, a spontaneous road trip to see my oldest daughter who's going to school in Spokane. And she said, Mom, let's go ice skating. Which everybody else said, yeah! And I went, oh! I was terrified. And as we were walking to the ice skating place, I was thinking, when was the last time I went ice skating? And I think, according to my memory, it was 26 years ago. I was about 20, the age that my oldest daughter is now. And, and I said, I'm probably not going to ice skate. You know, there, I, there was five of us, four kids and myself, and I, I, was, I, was, I was warning them, right? I'm probably just going to watch. I'm probably just going to watch. We're talking, and I'm thinking, not a chance. There is no way I'm doing this. So we get to the ice skating place. We go up to the ticket counter, and the lady says to me, how many tickets? Well, it suddenly felt like, you know when time expands and suddenly my mind kicked up, bleep, 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 I've had all of these words pass through and it's like, no, no, what are you thinking? You can't do this. 
You're weaker than you've ever been. When you fall, when, not if, when you fall, you'll probably break every bone in your body. Chemo probably weakened you, right? I had all this stuff, and then all of a sudden she said to me again, how many tickets? And I went, five. And then I, I thought, whoa, who said that? <laughs> not my mind. My mind was saying, absolutely not. It was that muscle of courage that spoke up and said, we'll take five tickets, please. And the kids turned to me and said, you're going to ice skate? I guess so. <laughs> and then I thought, well, I'll just hold on to the wall. I'll just do a couple laps. You know, I'll go real slow. It'll be OK. And so I did. I held on to the wall for the first time around the rink. And then I thought, well, this is boring. Right? If we're going to do this, let's just do this already. So I let go, and I did my thing. And oh my gosh, it felt great. It felt so good. And you know what? I didn't fall. I didn't break anything. I'm very sore. <laughs> and yesterday I could barely walk after we went ice skating. But it was so great. And I thought, you know, when we harden and we tell ourselves we can't do any things and we lose that sense of courage, we make our life so small. Right? Life is about taking risk. And the little risks, the bigger risks, it's about expanding to be willing to do something that you haven't done, or maybe you haven't done for a long time. And I can tell you, it's such a feeling of exhilaration. I felt like a kid. And I had all these kids passing me by, and that was fine. I had so much fun. I had so much fun. And then, after the first session, I got to sit out because I was pretty tired. I was done. And my kids wanted to still skate. But I lasted 45 minutes. I felt really great about that. <laughs> and then I got to watch my kids go round and watch their personalities come out in the way they skate. And I realized courage doesn't have to mean the same thing for all of us. Right? They all did it their own way. My older son, he was a little more cautious. He did his thing, but he got into his groove. My younger son was like a kamikaze. Like, let me on the ice and I'm just going to go. <laughs> and he'd fall and he'd get back and he'd do it again. Right? But we lose that, it seems like, the older we get. So think in your own life, in the last week maybe, how have you practiced courage? Or have you practiced courage? And how going forward into the next week could you do that? Do you have something coming up that scares you? And what can you do about that, right? How can you, how can you take that breath because it's about, it, it's not about not being afraid. We all know that, right? It's about being afraid and being willing to do it anyway. That's what courage is. I don't know if you're familiar with Brene Brown and her book, Daring Greatly. So, she's talking, she, she does research on vulnerability. And... I caught this part that it, it really caught my attention and she said here's the crux of the struggle that we all go through I want to experience your vulnerability but I don't want to be vulnerable vulnerability is courage in you and inadequacy in me I'm drawn to your vulnerability but repelled by mine and so I wonder how many of us have this illusion floating in our mind that when somebody else is vulnerable, they're showing strength. But when I'm showing my vulnerability, that makes me weak. I know I have that. As I've gone through my cancer, treatments and, and all of that. Um, I've been blogging every now and then because I decided 
if I was going to do this, I was going to be honest and transparent because that's how I've decided to do my life now. And the response I get from people is this um, loving the vulnerability. And sometimes I feel weak, like I should be able to do it better. Or I, I should be able to keep my mind in this place all the time. Right? And yet if somebody is vulnerable in front of me, I go, wow, they're showing so much strength. And so I just invite you to examine that within yourself and see if you have that contradiction going. And why is it? Why is it that it can be strength in someone else, but I see it as weakness? I think it's a protection mechanism for ourselves because when we're vulnerable, then we're, we're opening ourselves up to the world. And we open ourselves up to the world, sooner or later we will experience pain. Right? That's a given. But here's the thing, I think, that is the illusion. We're walking this earth, we're going to experience pain. Whether being vulnerable or not. And being vulnerable and opening to that facing things head on is the way to let them flow through and not get stuck in us and not harden us. That's how we soften. So she goes on to say, love is a form of vulnerability and if you replace the word love with vulnerability in that line, it's just as true. From calling a friend who's experienced a terrible tragedy to starting your own business, from feeling terrified to experiencing liberation, vulnerability is life's great dare. It's life asking, are you all in? Can you value your own vulnerability as much as you value it in others? Answering yes to these questions is not weakness. It's courage beyond measure. Powerful words. Courage beyond measure. And I think about that with what's happening now in our country. And no matter where you stand or what you believe, can you be all in? Can you still stay loving and soft and vulnerable? It's really easy to do when everything and everyone is in agreement with you, right? But the spiritual practice, as we know, is to do it all the time. All the time. So let's take this into meditation. John's going to play for us. And I think, as a closing thought, as I was thinking about courage, it's easier to have courage when you have faith in something bigger than yourself. I think courage and faith are a divine partnership that help each other move forward. And I know we'll be talking more about faith as the Advent season comes along, but keep that in mind. Courage and faith. Okay. So go ahead and get comfortable in your seat. Close your eyes if that feels good to you. So today we just think about the word courage and just pay attention if that brings anything up for you do you suddenly feel fear someplace in your body and if you do just notice that just notice it's there notice it where it's at and then take a deep breath breathing as we know helps bring us back into this present moment. Right here, right now, and right now, all is well. There's nothing to be afraid of. Now imagine a warm light coming into that place of fear, softening it. helping it to dissipate, to transform. Because what I've learned about fear is that the veil is very thin. It always seems so big until we find the courage to even start to step through it. And then it's never what we had imagined it would be.
So allow the warm light of love to soften the illusion of fear. And know that courage is your constant companion. And as scripture reminds us, be strong and of good courage. Be not frightened, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And let's take those words into silence for just a moment. Be strong and of good courage. Be not frightened, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with, the, is with you wherever you go. And so it is, and so we allow it to be. And when you're ready, you can come back into the room and open your eyes.